Aaron Boster here with Ohio Health MS Center. I have a no-show in clinic and I thought I would address a question uh, that's not discussed very often. Uh, this is a topic not about which disease modifying therapy to put a given patient on. It's a more general topic uh, discussing treatment styles or philosophies of the application of disease modifying therapy in MS. Uh, recently I sent out a Twitter poll asking folks what they wanted to hear about and people voted uh, and the prevailing vote was this topic so I hope that you enjoy this I uh, hope that it addresses some questions uh, maybe it'll spark some conversation so the topic is treatment styles in MS in other words when a given MSologist or MS uh, treater is addressing a patient what's the style that they use uh, there's a lot of different styles and so I'm gonna write on the board here the first one Watch and wait. This is a style that I detest. Um, it's an old style. It's not used very much anymore with good reason. Around the uh, early 90s, when we first had disease-modifying therapies that came out, we weren't, as a group of treaters, exactly sure how we wanted to use them. Uh, and it wasn't uncommon that a MS doctor or a neurologist taking care of an MS patient would say, well, let's just kind of see how things go. Let's see, I'm trying to read what's on the board. Um, or what people are typing in. So they would say, well, let's just watch, and as long as things are okay, well, then we're just going to let it go and not really treat you. And then if the patient really started to have symptoms or really started to have frequent attacks, that's when uh, someone would jump in and say, okay, we're going to apply a therapy. That's this watch and wait. Uh, and quite frankly, it's completely inappropriate. There's a profound amount of data that's been collected showing that that's a really bad idea. In fact, the earlier that you start therapy, the better you do long term. So I would love to put a line through watch and wait. Um, this is a treatment style which is no longer appropriate uh, in the MS space. The next treatment style I want to talk about, one and done. One and done. One and done treatment style uh, is seen all too often. Uh, and it's where a treater becomes very comfortable with one drug. It doesn't matter what the patient looks like. It doesn't matter any of the prognostic factors for the patient. This is the drug that the doctor is familiar with, and every single time she sees an MS patient, that's what she puts him on. And this is a style that doesn't make a lot of sense in the modern era. If you go back in time to the mid-90s, when we had a couple interferons and, and one other injection, glutarimer, you saw a lot of uh, people with very strong opinions. I like to use this drug all the time, and all patients will go on that drug, one and done. This is a treatment style that is very inappropriate in the modern era, given what we know now. We now know that patients who have quiet disease can speed up, and patients that have had active disease can slow down, and we need to be fleet of foot. We need to not become married to one given therapy. I don't have a problem if a doctor has a degree of comfort with a given therapy. In fact, that's wonderful. But that doctor uh, needs to be cognizant of the fact that the patient can evolve and change, and when the patient's disease becomes active and it's breakthrough disease, one and done doesn't cut it, and so we need to transfer. And so I'm going to put a line, this is my opinion, through one and done. Now, the next two types of treatments that I want to discuss, treatment styles, involve escalation. So, so escalation uh, is probably the most commonly used treatment style uh, in treating MS using therapeutics. And that's where you start a patient on a drug, and probably a drug that's mild to moderately effective, but it's got a gorgeous side effect profile, all things considered, and you see how the patient does. And if the patient is stable, maybe defined as no attacks, no change on MRI, maybe no exam changes, well then that's a great drug for the patient. But if the patient has breakthrough disease, you escalate the therapy. You're going to stop that therapy and switch to a new therapy, which at least in your heart and mind is an upgrade. Maybe it's more effective. Maybe it's more effective and you have less nice side effect profile, and that's an escalation model. Now, the escalation model is the most commonly used model in MS, and it comes with a couple traps. It's predicated on the idea that the doctor's paying close attention to the patient, that the doctor can pick up any breakthrough disease that could happen, that the patient is reporting everything that's going on, and that the patient is going to be aware of change when it occurs. And all too often, this doesn't happen. Um, someone might be participating in escalation therapy, but they're not checking MRIs on an annual basis. And so there might be lesions that uh, show up and they don't know because they don't look. Or a patient on a given therapy has a new attack, 
and the doctor and patient say, eh, let's just keep watching. That's not um, utilizing escalation therapy in an aggressive fashion. And so when I think of styles, I think of escalation slow and escalation aggressive. And in my opinion, if you're going to use an escalation model, you need to be aggressive about how you apply it. And so if you have a patient on a given drug and they have a new attack, in my opinion, that's a reason to consider changing the drug. If you have a patient on a drug and they have a new spot on their MRI, same thing. That's a reason to consider making a switch. If a patient's on a drug and they're failing the litmus test of life, they can't hike anymore, that's not going to show up on their exam, but they've gotten worse neurologically. And I think in situations like this, when we're using an escalation model, we have to be aggressive about it. Now, the last style that I want to talk about uh, is, is my preference. It doesn't make it best, it doesn't make me right, it just makes me opinionated. And that style is called induction. Induction therapy is, uh, is the opposite of escalation therapy. Instead of starting with a very well tolerated therapy that's mild to moderately effective and then upgrading and then upgrading, I like to take that and turn it upside down. I want to meet someone with MS and I want to lay waste to their immune uh, processes. I want to uh, rewrite their immune system. I want to crush the disease before it, it spreads. And I, I want to reset the clock. And now these are desires that I have. They're not always easy to do. Um, but the concept is induction. Uh, this is a concept used commonly in other fields like in oncology um, and to a lesser extent in rheumatology. And only now are we starting to see potent therapies like alemtuzumab and stem cell transplants that allow us to have concepts of induction enter into our clinical discussions. Is induction therapy appropriate for all patients? Probably not. Um, and do I think that you need to have a doc that does induction? No, I don't. What I will submit to you is, as a treating clinician, knowing your style is important. And as a patient being taken care of by a doctor, knowing that doctor's style is important. It may influence the way the conversation goes, and it may influence your understanding of how drugs are being applied. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll throw up one more, um, and I'll just stick it over here, and that's called stacking. Stacking is a style that I see less nowadays, but it's still done. And it's where you put someone on a therapy, and if they're not doing well, instead of upgrading the therapy, you add to the therapy. So let's pretend just by a discussion point that someone's on some type of interferon therapy and they're not doing as well as they'd like. Well, a stacking style would be to add pulse steroids on top of it or to add Imuran on top of it. So again, lots of different styles. One isn't better than the other. They're just very, very different. And we've talked about watch and wait. We've talked about one and done. We've talked about escalating slowly. We've talked about escalating aggressively. We've talked about induction. And then I threw in, for good measure, the concept of stacking. Once again, my name is Aaron Boster. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is the Ohio Health MS Center. Uh, this was an educational opportunity that I hope you found helpful. And uh, we chose this topic because you guys voted for it on Twitter. Talk to you real soon. Have a great day.